Today, I'm going to teach you how to get a good Gwent collection started quickly so you can go have some fun playing Gwent. Step one is to figure out what faction you want to play. To have a meaningful collection that's fun from patch to patch, you really want to be starting with just one faction. When you have a lot of cards for that, then you'll expand to other factions. So, how do you pick a faction? Well, you can see there's six of them in the game. And you're given starter decks, at least as of posting this video, for five of them. Syndicate is the odd one out. We're going to ignore them. They're fine. Nilfgaard, Celia, Squaytail, Northern Realms, and Monsters will all come with starter decks. And what I would say is, just start playing with them. Try out different leader abilities. Feel free to swap a card or two in your deck. And start queuing up on the ladder. Don't take it seriously. All you're trying to do is figure out what you enjoy playing. Also, be mindful of what your opponent is playing. When you get destroyed, let's say I run into a deck running Alba, Armor, Calvary, and they keep locking my cards, and I'm like, Urgh, it's so frustrating. They're stopping me, from, you know, Nilfgaard is stopping me from what I want to do. Make sure not to get discouraged, but also wonder, would I enjoy locking and destroying my opponent's stuff and making it very hard for them to play their game? Or maybe you see a Skellige Warrior deck, and they play Hemdal, and it blows up your row. And you say, wow, that was infuriating. All my hard work and swarming is gone. Also make sure to have the thought, wow, would I like to do that to my opponents? That's right. I want you to cut both ways in terms of I want to be focused on, hey, this is fun for me to play. And also focused on, hey, I got destroyed or saw my opponent doing this and that looks fun. Look at it from both sides of the mirror. Is that a saying? Sure it is. Moving along. After you've decided what faction to focus on, now it's time to figure out how to get cards for that faction. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna go over to the kegs here, and you are gonna ignore a lot of things in the store. That's right, you get a bunch of keg options for a hundred, a measly hundred ore. You can buy a keg, and you're gonna ignore everything that's not a faction keg. That's right. You're gonna go straight to whichever one you pick. Now, when I first started playing Gwen, I picked monsters, because monsters are cool. Monsters represent. Anyways, monsters are fantastic. So I'd say I wanted to pick monsters. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So, what I would start doing is spending all my ore on the monster kegs. These are guaranteed to get me monster cards, so they're going to help me quickly build out all the commons and rares. Every keg comes with four commons, though sometimes there can be epics or legendaries or rare cards mixed in the random four. And you get kind of one special card, which is guaranteed to be rare, epic, or legendary, and you have three options, pick one. Feel free to hit the Discord community down below at the Plain Talk John link if you need help picking a keg because it's super active and a lot of people there will be willing to help you. Excellent, am I right? So now the question is, John, okay, I'm going to get, fa I picked my faction, I'm going to get faction kegs. How do I get ore? Because that's what I need. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Reward points. Reward points let you spend on these fancy reward books. You can trade in your keys for different little pockets. Like for example, you see here, I can trade in one key, because this is one here, for 50 ore. And then boom, I click it, and boom, 50 ore is there. Now you know I can't reshoot the video, because I'm out of keys. Good stuff, right? I call them keys, they're really reward points. So what is the most efficient way then to get ore? Well, I'm glad you asked. High level, it's these story notes. So normally, as we saw there, one key, one reward point is worth 50 ore. Look at this one for three. This one gets you a little bit bonus, so you get to go an extra 50 beyond. And there's a couple things that go beyond that rule too, which is the story notes. Story notes cost five keys to unlock. Let me pop over to a different book where I don't have it completed. If you look at this book, you'll see that story notes, the first one, it costs five, gives you 250 ore. The second one gives you 300. Third one, 350. And then the last one is giving you actually a two to one rate of 100 ore per key. That is a fantastic thing to target. So ignore everything else. Just target these, get them done, move on to the next book. But John, you're going to ask, how do I know which book to begin? There's a ton. Fortunately, somebody out there in the Gwen community put together an Excel document to tell you which ones to target. Link in the description. Click on that, open it, and it'll tell you which books have the most bang for your reward, po reward point buck that you can spend as efficiently as possible. Sweet. So now you know how to turn reward points into ore, you know how to buy, turn ore into faction kegs, and you already picked your faction, so you're good to go. Except how do you get more reward points? Well, I'm glad you asked. So a couple different ways. One, you are going to naturally accumulate different resources and stuff just by logging in. There are daily login rewards. But the real way to get keys, and if you don't want to spend money, you get the journeys, you can buy a journey, you can always buy kegs. But if you want to play totally free, 
Contracts is the answer. This is right. You get rewarded just for doing cool stuff in the game. Oh my goodness. Did you know you get a reward point if you win the first round of an online match with no cards in your hand remaining? Did you know you can get a reward point if you win a round by getting 100 more points than your opponent? You might say, wow, that sounds, some of these sound like a little difficult. And like, yes, yeah, some of them are difficult, but there's a ton of them. So if you need some reward points, come over here. See what you, what's available and be smart about it. Even look, rewarding endeavor. Spend the reward point, you get nine reward points in return. Like, oh, hey, you figured out the basic system. Let me dump a bunch of reward points at you. The cool part about Gwent is it is by far the most generous online CCG there is. Period. Not close. Unless there's one that gives you every single card from the get-go, this, this is going to be incredible. So, all I would say is grind out the contracts. A couple other things I should note to help you accumulate a collection quickly, but that's generally how you do it. Play the game. You'll get reward points pretty easily. Spend them on the trees and fish in the, based on the Excel link or the Google Doc link down below. From there, pop it into the faction, or uh, get the ore from the or from get the ore from the story nodes, then get the faction kegs for the faction you like, so you can get a big card collection. I should also note why it's so important to focus on one faction. Not only does it help you build out a collection quickly, but every month CDPR is buffing and nerfing cards. So while they try to keep every faction relevant, different factions can do a lot of different things. So there's a swarm deck for monsters that swarms the field of all kinds of stuff. There's also control-oriented style, or styles revolving around the card called Kelly Tulis, also known as Kelly. And she controls the field with a lot of power. She doesn't really want you to swarm. She wants you to actually prevent your opponent from doing what they want and keep her alive so her effect can just keep ticking every turn. You can find her in the deck builder. Their effect doesn't matter too much in this video. But the short story is, all these different factions will probably be stronger and weaker depending on the meta. But usually CDPR is going to make sure there's some good decks for each one, but you don't know what that is. So therefore, you don't want to be buying very specific decks and focus on different decks from each faction, because the next bounce patch might render them all useless. But if you focus on a faction, usually every bounce patch, a faction will have a decent to very strong deck that you can play and be competitive. Hence, focus on a faction first. Only when you have most of it complete or you're getting really bored do you hop over to a second faction and pick something else to help stir up the pot, make sure the game is always fresh for you. A couple more things I want to note. Number one, you see this number here? This is your prestige. If you hit level 16 and go one more past it, you'll prestige. Every time you prestige, you get a permanent reward in the game. Now, all the prestiges except the first one really don't matter, but that very first prestige does. It guarantees you a rare card and then the random four cards in every keg so what do i mean by that when you open a keg remember you get four cards you can't choose and then you get one card that's a rare epic or legendary card you get three options you pick one the one you want in this case one of the four random ones are guaranteed to be rare so once you prestige just one time you're going to find yourself able to complete rare collections for faction after faction very quickly my advice is then when it comes to scrap spending focus on epic cards and legendary cards it's okay to spend some scraps early on on key rares and common cards you need for a faction, but do try to save them ideally for the epics and legendaries because your rare collections, once you prestige just one time, will quickly fill itself out because you're basically getting a minimum, uh, worst case scenario, of two rares per monster keg or faction keg in general. Sweet. Final, final note is Thronebreaker. That's right, Gwen has a standalone game called Thronebreaker, and if you buy it on the same platform you play Gwent on, so buy Thronebreaker on Steam if you have, if you play Gwent through Steam, or if you have Gwent through GOG, buy Thronebreaker on GOG. It'll give you a bunch of cards, it'll give you some contracts and some reward points and stuff like that, a couple of in-game cosmetics. It's nice, it's cute, it's definitely not mandatory, but it gets you some decent cards at least as of posting this, and it's also generally just a really fun game. So worth checking out. If you seem even mildly interested, pop it on a wish list. Wait till it goes on sale for 10 or 5 bucks and pick that up when you get a chance. Anyways, that's my spiel on how to get cards in, a, in Gwent very quickly so you can get playing of cool, powerful decks, climb the ranked ladder, and crush the souls of your enemies. I hope you liked it. If you like it, if you did like it, check out the links down below. There's more like YouTube stuff that, that can teach you more about Gwent. There's a great active Discord community that can help answer your questions. And uh, yeah, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, all that fun jazz. So who cares? I love you and take care. Shout out to McRandar, Pseudonym81, and Ben Ali for all their generous support on Patreon.